Hey everyone, welcome back to Tip of the Week. In this week's video, we're going to dive deep into a more advanced editing technique while still learning about a bunch of tips and tricks inside Photo Raw 2020 along the way. So today we're going to take a daytime photo and turn it into a nighttime image simply by using some layers, some local adjustments, effects, blending modes, and a luminosity mask. Simple, simple stuff. So let's jump right in and get started. So inside Photo Raw, to get started here, we just need to grab our base image and we're going to take this base photo here and we're going to transform it into a nighttime photo. So to get started, all we need to do is take this base photo into the edit module. So I'll just head over to the edit tab there. And now we're inside of the edit module here. Now with this photograph, because we need to turn it into a nighttime scene, we need to remove the sky first. If we had this huge blob of white on our sky, it's definitely not going to look like it was shot at night. So let's mask this out really quickly by using our AI quick mask tool. So to access my AI quick mask tool, I'm just going to head over to my left toolbar here and I'm going to click on the masking tools. Then I'll head up to my top tool modifier bar and I'll select AI. You can also grab it by hitting W on your keyboard. Now we need to first select our mode. Now there's two modes, there's drop and there's keep. When our mode is set to keep, we're going to paint on all the areas that we want, that we want to keep on that layer or filter or local adjustment. So with the AI Quick Mask tool, we first need to determine our mode. And there's two modes, there's keep and there's drop. With keep, you're keeping all of the areas that you paint on. And then with drop, you're dropping those areas from the mask. So I'm going to click on the mode. I'm going to determine its drop. Now with this drop here, I'm just going to paint on red all the areas that I want to remove from my mask. I don't have to be too specific here, and I'm just going to lower my brush size a bit and make two little kind of blobs in here. I think that'll help. This is just telling Photo Raw that this is the tonality that I want to remove from my scene. Now I'm going to switch my mode from drop to keep, and I'm going to paint on in green all of the areas that I want to keep in my mask. So I'm going to increase my brush size quite a bit, maybe even larger than that, pretty huge. And I'm just going to brush on all the areas that I want to keep. So I'm just going to brush basically over the entire photograph. With this area right here in the middle, that big kind of blob of white on the alley, we're actually going to remove that later on in the video with the clone stamp tool. So we're not going to worry about that right now. I'll still just paint that on in green. Maybe make my brush size a little bit smaller here. And boom, that looks pretty good just like that. So I'll just hit apply. And it's showing that Photo Raw is taking that area, which is in red now, and it's going to remove that from the layer. So we're basically going to remove that big chunk of white as soon as I hit the Done button. So I'm just going to hit Done here. And there we go. Now we've removed that white layer from our scene, and it kind of immediately already seems a little bit darker by removing that white. So now that we've removed that sky area, we need to bring in our cloud layer so that we have a night sky behind us. So we'll head over to our layers pane here and I'll just click on this plus button. I'll add a layer and I'll go into my extras. I'll go into textures. I'll go down to skies here. And let's just do this sky right here. So now that we've added that sky layer in there, I'm just going to hit V on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my transform tool. With my transform tool selected, I can move this layer around as I please. Well, we need this layer behind our base photo. So I'm just going to go into my layers pane and I'll drag that layer below my base photo, just like that. And now I can kind of move this layer around. And I really just want like the darkest part of the sky, kind of about right there. And so now with that dark, and so now with that darkening area, behind us, we can clean up this mask a little bit that we made with our AI Quick Mask tool. So I'm going to make sure that my base photo is selected now because I want to mask this area from it. And I'm just going to hit B on my keyboard real quick. I'm going to lower the brush size and that's going to grab me my masking brush. With my masking brush, I'm going to make sure it's set to paint out so that I'm removing this area from my base photo. And I'm just going to paint these ladders out from the scene here.
just like that. So what I need to do now is I need to just clean up this area a little bit. If I zoom in here, you can see there's a little bit of a halo edge around this. And an easy way to fix that is to use the chisel mask tool. So I'm just going to head over to my refine tools over here on my left toolbar. I'll head up to the top bar and I'll choose my chisel mask tool. You can also grab this by holding down shift and hitting H on your keyboard. Now with the chisel mask tool, it's going to remove all of the areas around the edge of your mask, but nothing inside of it. So this is perfect for just chiseling away the edge or that halo on the edge of your base layer. So I'm actually going to go up to my mode and make sure my amount is set to about, I don't know, four or five, nothing too crazy. And now I'll just brush this around the edges of this a couple times, and that'll just remove some of that halo -y edge. And remember that we're going to dim this down quite a bit, so we don't really need too many of these details on the back of these buildings. So I'll just zoom back out now. And voila, that looks pretty natural right there, nothing too crazy. Now we need to go in here and we need to play with our base photo develop settings and our sky layer develop settings so that we can match the two up. First things first, I'm going to click on my sky layer and I'm going to head to my develop tab and I'm just going to pull this exposure back quite a bit. Now I have a really dark sky background. Well, in this develop tab, I'm also going to pull up on my whites a little bit. Whenever you're modifying an image like this where you want to turn a daytime photo into more of a dark nighttime scene, the biggest thing is your whites, your blacks, and your temperature. Controlling those three will allow you to make a much more believable nighttime scene. So I'm just going to pull up on the whites a little bit. I'm going to remove any contrast, and that'll bring back a little bit of that kind of glow or fogginess to that area on my sky to make it a little bit more natural and more human-like. So now that we have that like that, I'm just going to actually go over to my layers and I'm going to click on my base photo now. Now this is the really important part of modifying uh, the develop tab. Inside of the develop tab, we need to go in here to our exposure and our highlights and many of these sliders and just adjust them to make the scene look like it was shot at night. So first things first, I'm just going to pull back on my exposure tab to about or my exposure slider rather, to about, I don't know, 2 point, negative 2.8 or so, that's going to really darken my scene. You can see I can't see much of my scene at all. Well, let's head back over to our tone and color, and let's just pull up on the whites a little bit. You can see that when I pull up on my whites, I'm already getting a little bit more view and detail into my scene. And we can just keep playing with these settings here. I'm going to maybe remove a little bit of contrast like that. Maybe pull up on my midtones just a hair. And remember, we want to maintain that really dark vibe of the scene here. We don't want this area to seem like it was off from the sky area. So because the sky area is really dark, we want to maintain that look across this entire photograph. So let's just keep playing with the exposure settings. I'm actually going to go to my highlights, and I'm going to pull those up a little bit. And that's going to just bring in a little bit more contrast to the scene. Maybe add in a little more whites. Actually, I might add in a little bit of contrast. Yeah, so we'll add back a little bit of that contrast. That'll darken things up a bit more as well. And then we'll head down to our blacks. I'll add in a little bit of true black there. It's going to give it that stark kind of nighttime contrast. And then we're going to play with our color a bit. So at nighttime, when, when you're shooting at night, typically it's going to be a little bit cooler. these two layers together, this is where we can go in and kind of add the magic to this photograph. There's a few things we need to do. Um, one of those things is we need to add a sun flare or some light to this lamppost. 
we need to remove this area right here with our clone stamp tool. And then we need to paint in random areas of light to make it seem like this was believable. Um, we need to paint in some light on these windows, some light over here, and uh, just some generic light kind of where there's some, some highlights hitting our scene. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to add in that sun flare right here. I'm going to go over to my layers and I'm going to click on this plus button to add a new layer. Then I'm going to go into my extras 2020. I'll go into sun flares, go to sun star, and then we'll head down and that's right, we're actually adding a sun star, not a sun flare. And then we'll grab this one right here that looks pretty perfect. And obviously this doesn't look good like this on our scene, so we'll just hit V on our keyboard. That's grabbing our transform tool. Now I can move this kind of about as I please. And I'm just going to lower the opacity a bit. And then I'm going to go up to my scale and I'm going to lower the scale. And that's just going to make it a bit smaller. And now I can kind of move this onto my light and see how that looks. Maybe a bit bigger there. Just so we have that kind of middle area on our light really covering that lamppost. That looks pretty good just like that. So we'll just increase that opacity back to 100. And so now we need to remove this dark area behind our sun star here. So we'll click on our sun star and we're going to go into the blending options for that sun star. Just click on the blending options here and we're going to go down to lighten. If I click on lighten, that's going to remove all of that dark from the backdrop of my sun star. So now we can see that we don't have any of that prevalent on this sun star layer. Well, we do have just a little bit of that darkening kind of in between these rays of light. So to fix that, we're going to use <coughs> So to fix that, we're going to use a luminosity mask. We'll head over to our sun star layer. I'll just click on the masking options here. Now to remove that dark area from the sun star layer, the luminosity mask is basically just going to favor the bright areas on this layer and then remove all of the dark areas. Uh, luminosity masks basically are taking your dark areas and your light areas and it's creating masks based off of that information. And to start, it's always going to favor the bright areas to start out. So an easy fix for this would just be to go into the sun star and then click on lumen. So you can see already that just by clicking on that lumen, it's taken away all of that dark from my sun star there. Well, I want a little bit of that uh, kind of glow and edge around these rays. So I'm just going to go into the levels in my masking options and the levels is how you modify your luminosity mask. Uh, anything you pull to the right, it's going to remove that from your mask. And anything you pull to the left, it's going to add that tone into your mask. Well, I want to add in the midtones because that's kind of that glowy look in that sun star. So I'll just grab my midtones, which is this middle button right here. And I'll just grab that and pull that to the left. And if you keep an eye on the sun star, by pulling that midtone point to the left, it adds in and removes as I kind of wiggle it back and forth. But you can see that by pulling it to the left, it brings a little bit of that glow back. So we'll just pull it up a little bit, maybe about right there. Perfect. Now that we've brought in that sun star, we need to modify the sun star a bit. And the first thing I want to do to the sun star is I want to go into my effects tab here and I'm going to add a filter and I'm going to add a glow filter. Now the glow filter is just going to bring in a little bit of glow, a little bit of softness, just kind of ensure that this isn't really just a harsh, sun star on my scene. So I'm going to go into here, I'm going to pull up on my halo, and you can see that by pulling up on my halo, it just gives it a little bit more softness. So I'll just pull it up like that, and then maybe pull up on my amount just a hair, and that'll kind of combat some of that brighter areas in the background. Actually, I could probably pull it down a little bit. Maybe up a little bit. There we go. So now with this sun star here, I'm going to go into the sun star layer and I'm going to pull back on the opacity of that sun star. The reason I'm doing that is because we can't actually see the lamppost here, so we don't really know what's going on. But if we pulled back on the opacity of the sun star layer, we could see that a little bit. So I'm just going to go back to the opacity of that layer and I'll just pull it back a hair, maybe about right there, so then I can see the lamppost behind it. Now I'm going to add a local adjustment layer, and that local adjustment layer is going to go in here, and it's just going to boost up the light in the middle. 
so we have kind of dimmed down rays around this kind of centered light. So I'll just go into my local adjustments tab here. I'll add a local adjustment, or I already have a new local adjustment, so I'll just rename this one light for star. Oops, I don't want light for start. And then we're gonna make sure it's on the Magic Eye Fixer preset. I typically use the Magic Eye Fixer whenever I'm kind of bringing out light and things. So we'll just head over here and I'll just lower my brush size a bit. I could probably zoom in. I'll just hit K on my keyboard. And then if I paint this in, you can see it just adds in that little bit of, that little bit of kind of stretch of that middle area. And then I can pull up on the whites a little bit like that. See that? And that'll just kind of fill that scene out a little bit in that lamppost. So that's with, with it applied and that's without it. Just gives it a little bit more depth in that lamppost, makes it seem more realistic. Okay, so now that we've added in our sun star, we could actually probably go up and I'll maybe increase the opacity just a hair. There we go, that seems a little bit more natural. So now that we've added in our sun star here, we need to go in and let's actually remove this area right down here with our clone stamp tool. So I'm gonna make sure that my base photo is selected because that's the layer that has this light on it. And then I'll head over to my retouch tools and I'll make sure that my clone stamp tool is selected with this little stamper up top. <clears throat> you can also grab it by holding down shift and hitting S on your keyboard. Now with the clone stamp tool selected, the way that it works is you use this first little area as kind of your, your guide. You pick your target and then you you stamp that in everywhere else. To choose your guide, just hold down the Option key on your keyboard and that will pull up your little target tool. So I'm just gonna hold down Option and I'm actually just gonna click on this row or this line right here, like that. And the first thing I wanna do is get these lines right. So I'm just gonna paint that line in right there, just like that. Then I'll grab this other line, just holding on top of it, holding Control on top of it, and then just clicking. And then I can just paint this line in as well. Actually, I need to re readjust that. There we go. So now I can just paint that line in like that as well. And then I'll just go in here and paint a little bit more of the middle part. Like that, it looks pretty natural like that. And then we'll just kind of keep doing that. So I'll just hold down Option, I'll click right there. That's grabbing me that point right there. And then I'll just paint to kind of fill that area in like that. Then I'll come down here and I'll do this kind of the same thing to the other side. And remember I can borrow any of these areas on the street that seem nice. Just like that. So now that we've kind of removed that light and we zoom out, that's so much easier to look at and not think, oh, they shot this during the daytime. Without that big blob of light there, we now can really focus on getting this into that nighttime mood. So the next thing we're gonna do is just paint in light kind of randomly into the photograph, or not randomly, um, a little bit randomly kind of in this area, but we're gonna paint light into this photograph and that's gonna add that humanistic element to the shot and make it seem like it's really natural and believable. So the first thing we're gonna paint is the window light. So I'm gonna make sure that I have this base photo selected because that's the layer that I'm painting light onto. I'll click on my local tab here, and I'm just gonna rename this one Windows. So I know that these ones are applied to the windows. And again, I'm gonna go into the more, and I'm gonna go down to Magic Eye Fixer. Now in the Magic Eye Fixer, I wanna modify a bunch of these settings here. And it's okay if you wanna modify these after you paint them in. I typically do it beforehand, and then I can see what I'm doing, and then I can readjust. So I'm just gonna to go to my whites, I'm gonna pull those up to 100. I'm gonna pull up my highlights to 100 as well. I'm gonna remove a little bit of the contrast. I'm gonna pull up on my exposure right here. And then I'm gonna pull up on the temperature as well and that's gonna warm things up a bit. Uh, the reason that I wanna warm things up a bit is because when I paint light onto these windows, if this were a natural shot, the light would be warm because it would be coming from lights that were inside of an apartment building which are very warm. So let's go over to our windows and let's just see what it looks like. So I'm gonna use my adjustment brush, which I can grab by hitting K on my keyboard. And since this one has kind of a light right there already, I'll just paint this on like that. 
and it's still looking pretty good. It looks, you know, like that was a light that was on during this shot. And the thing about doing this is you kind of want to do it randomly. You don't want to turn all of these lights on because if it was a nighttime scene, not every person in this apartment building would be awake. So I typically go for maybe like one here. We'll do one here. And then maybe since this one is already there, we can do that. And it'll look kind of like one single level on that house. Um, we could do this top one a little bit maybe. Like that. And then maybe we'll do lower the brush size and we could do this one over here. Or so I'll just zoom in real quick. So I'll do maybe this one. Like that. And then maybe this one. And zoom out here to see what we're looking at. And then let's get one here. Let's do this one right here. Let's do that shot right there. So okay on my keyboard. And again, just painting light into these areas. Just to make it seem like they were on and someone was in there. Just like that, that looks pretty good. So now that we have our windows done here, I'm just gonna lower the opacity of that window layer and then just kind of incrementally pull it up until I get the mood I'm going for, which is about right there. And I'll actually go down here and maybe pull up on my midtones a little bit and then I'll add in a little bit more structure Maybe a little less structure. But if we turn these off and on now, sweet. I really like how those look on this shot. So now let's add another local adjustment layer. And for this next local adjustment layer, I'm gonna name this kind of random, well, let's not do random, we'll just do uh, alley light. And we'll apply this light to the areas in the alley. So I'll just go down to more again. I'll click Magic Eye Fixer. And then with my adjustment brush, I'll just come in here and paint kind of light where the this light would be shining light into the alleyway. So just like that, just kind of gives our eyes from something to look at. And then we'll go over here, kind of paint some light onto those things. Because if that was really had, you know, light blooming out of it, we would definitely see that light coming in here. Just like that. And then let's add one more local adjustment layer. And we'll name this one random light because we're going to paint this one kind of randomly around. And same thing, magic eye fixer. Uh, but this time we're going to lower the opacity a bit and we're actually going to raise the whites a ton. Actually, let's go down to that alley light and let's raise the whites on that as well. Just like that. Maybe even a little bit less and then we'll pull down the midtones of hair. Or the shadow tones. Sweet. So now that alley light looks like that. Looks like this light is beaming in here under this alley and now we can use our random light layer and basically I'm just going to paint on areas that I, uh, that I think would have light if this was captured at night. So I can see that this tree over here has a little bit of light on it. So I'll paint a little bit of light on that tree right there. Maybe I'll lower the brush size and then kind of paint a little bit on this wall like that. Um, maybe I'll paint a little bit on the sign right there. And you really just want to kind of go around and make sure that everything looks natural. I'm just going to paint a little bit of light in between these bars so I can see through there. Um, I'll go down here and I'll lower my opacity a little bit as, oops, I'll lower my opacity a little bit. And then I'll just paint in maybe a little bit of light on this building right there, like that. And boom, right there. A little bit right there, and then maybe a little bit there. And just keep kind of randomly, you know, painting little areas of light in. It just makes it a lot more dynamic. It, you know, it kind of trails your eye around. So we'll just maybe paint in a little bit of light there. Just like that. And then I'll just lower my brush size a little bit. And to kind of accentuate these leading lines in here, I'm going to add another local adjustment layer. I'll name this one lines 
And all we're going to do with this one is we're going to raise our structure quite a bit and then raise our whites. So we just see the whites in these lines kind of leading into this frame. So I'm just going to hold down, or I'm going to click to, to paint this in, right? Oops, I got to increase my exposure. So my exposure was down to negative uh, one and I need it at zero. So now that my exposure is at zero and my whites are at 92 and my structure is at 71, which is really intense, I'm just going to head over, I'm going to click here. That's going to brush it in and then I'm going to hold down shift and then I'll just brush this down like that and that's going to make a straight line for me just leading down that area. So I'll just do that to this side, click, then hold down shift and it just made that nice kind of line right there and we can see a little bit of that detail in there, add some white in there. So just another kind of leading line for our scene. So I think this looks pretty good as far as the general nighttime photo. One thing that we need to do now is just merge it together and then stylize the final shot. So let's head up to our layers here. On my top layer, I'm going to right click and I'll just click new stamp layer. In this new stamp layer, now we have our final composite and we have the rest of these images down here so we can always go back and readjust. With a new stamp layer, it duplicates your layers that you already have and then merges them together into one cohesive layer. So I'll just rename this one final. And so just to kind of give you an idea of what we've already done, I'm just going to turn off the Sunstar layer and then I'm going to go into my base photo and I will reset the layer properties for that base photo. And then I'll click on the develop tab and I'll reset the develop tab and I'll reset the local adjustments tab. So now if I turn off my final layer to view what we had before, we had this image before and we turned it into this shot. So now with our nighttime photo, since it's all composited together, we can go into our effects tab and we can start adding different styles to it. I'm going to add a filter and I'll add the LUTs filter and I'm going to go into my category and I just made these brand new Urban Explorer LUTs which are free if you are a Photo Raw owner so I'll just click on Urban Explorer LUTs and some of my favorites in here are kind of these dark moodifying ones like this one actually I really like but I'm actually going to click on this we'll do five yeah we'll do this six one I really like that and I'm going to lower the contrast a little bit like that and then I'm going to head up to my filters again. I'm going to add another filter. I'll add the curves filter. And inside my tone curve, I'm just going to pull up on my midtones, which is this middle area in my tone curve. I'm just going to pull up on the middle, and that's going to give me a little bit of a midtone boost. So you can see I'm kind of boosting those midtones like that. But now it's a little bit too bright. So I'm going to head down to this bottom left area, and right above this black point is my shadows. So I'll just click right here and I'll just pull it down a little bit like that. And that's going to create a little bit more contrast in my scene. And so now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, we went from this photograph to this image. And we can always go in and we can readjust these LUTs or anything if we need to. So I'm going to go in here and I'll just remove a little bit of that opacity so I can see a little bit more color on these buildings. And so now if we head up to our layers, we'll just turn this off again. And again, we have this photograph from this image. So that's how to turn a daytime photograph into a nighttime image using On One Photo Raw 2020. Thanks so much for watching Tip of the Week. I hope you learned a lot about transforming images using different layers and some creative tips and tricks inside On One Photo Raw 2020. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and stay updated whenever we drop new videos and new content. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe out there.